Few things in life are certain, but when it comes to San Antonio in the spring, there is a good chance you're going to see some hail. And this year, we've seen our share of hailstorms. This was a big hail event for us. It, it sort of reminded me of 2016. I mean, we're talking baseball sized hail. This is round two of the hail. If you've lived in South Texas for a while, you're probably no stranger to hail, but there's a lot about the science of these weather events that you may not know. We're taking a look at how hail forms, why this region of Texas gets so many hailstorms, and the damage that these weather events can cause. KSAT explains. KSAT explains. KSAT explains. KSAT explains. On demand, in depth perspective. Perspective on stories we bring you in our newscasts throughout the day. We're looking into concerns over voting safety during a pandemic and the battle over mail in voting. A look at how the protests and demonstrations have played out in our city and an examination of what it means to be black in San Antonio. An issue that you have likely felt the effects of, rising property taxes. The roots of Tejano run deep in South Texas. We examine the cultural impact the music has had in San Antonio. Meteorologist Katie Blake and I will be explaining everything you need to know about hail on this week's episode of Case That Explains. Thanks for joining us for this episode of KSAT Explains. I'm Myra Arthur. In early May, the KSAT 12 Weather Authority team broke into programming to make our viewers aware of a sudden hailstorm. In the days that followed, we reported on all the damage that was left behind. Now that the threat is over and the damage has been assessed, we want to explore the science behind these hailstorms. Why does it happen? How does it form? And what do you need to know to stay safe during the next hailstorm? We're turning the reins over to the experts for this episode, meteorologist Sarah Spivey and Katie Blake. As residents of San Antonio and South Central Texas, we all know that hail is a big concern whenever strong storms move through the area. And as meteorologists, Katie and I would love to take some time to explain why hail happens in this part of Texas, how hail forms, and how to stay safe during a hailstorm. That's exactly right. According to the National Weather Service, in just the past 10 years, at least 16 large hail events have happened in and around the San Antonio area. So if you do the math, that averages to more than one a year. And one of the reasons why we have such very large hail in this part of South Central Texas is because of our proximity to the West Texas dry line. Now take, for example, the May hailstorms this year. Temperatures were so hot behind the dry line in Catula in the afternoon that they fired off a few showers. These showers then moved into warm, humid air closer to San Antonio and exploded into thunderstorms. Yeah, one of these thunderstorms tracked right over San Antonio and was strengthening as it moved across central parts of the county. In total, this one event produced more than 30 hail reports, some as large as softballs. And many remember the very destructive hailstorm of April 12th, 2016. On this day, a very large hailstorm moved across Bear County just north of downtown San Antonio from 9 to 10 p.m. Tennis ball sized hail fell in a swath from the Government Canyon area over to the airport and east through St. Hedwig. Some of the largest hailstones of up to softball size fell near Holotus and Leon Valley and east in Alamo Heights and Kirby. And this one event resulted in $1.36 billion of damage. That actually makes this the second costliest hailstorm in Texas history. To add insult to injury, another storm with large hail would hit San Antonio only two weeks later. So we know that hail can be destructive, but what makes it so big sometimes? To understand that, we've got to start with how hail forms in the first place. Now, hail formation is a fascinating process, and it's actually one of my favorite things about weather. So I hope after this episode, you're going to be able to tell a lot about the next hailstone that lands in your yard. So to have hail, you first have to have a thunderstorm. Thunderstorms, especially large and organized ones called supercells like this one here, have something called an updraft and a downdraft. These are areas of fast moving wind going up into the storm and then down to the ground. The updraft transports raindrops to the very top of the storm where they freeze because it is so cold. This is the very beginning of a hailstone right up there at the top. Really cold. So 
Once a hailstone forms, it goes on a bit of a wild ride. Those updrafts and downdrafts that we talked about, they carry the hail up and down the storm. Each trip up and down adds another layer to the hailstone as it bumps into super cooled water droplets. So with each trip up to the top of the storm, the hailstone gets a little bit bigger. Eventually, the hailstone becomes too heavy and falls out of the storm and onto the ground. So a much stronger storm can support or carry much larger hail. And on the flip side, a weak thunderstorm will produce very small hail, sometimes maybe even as small as Greenpeace. According to the National Weather Service, the largest hailstone ever recorded in the United States fell in South Dakota back in 2010. Look at this. The hailstone was eight inches in diameter. 18 inches around in circumference and weighed nearly two pounds. Notice the shape of this record hailstone though. It almost looks like it's made up of some smaller stones. It's also got these little appendages sticking up. So what causes that odd shape? Well, hailstones can have a few different shapes, all based on their journey through a thunderstorm. Some hailstones are perfectly round. They look pristine and they'll have these little rings on them, just like trees have rings. Each ring represents a tree trip back up to the top of the storm where more super cooled water freezes on the hailstone, adding another layer to it. So with each layer, we get a new ring. This process can be repeated several times until the stone gets too heavy. Sometimes hail can look jagged with appendages, kind of like that picture we just saw. These stones likely started to melt on their way down a thunderstorm and then refroze as the storm's updraft carried it back to the top. And finally, some stones just look a little bumpy, and this is a result of smaller stones bumping into one another in the thunderstorm to eventually form one larger hailstone. Hail is very common in any thunderstorms, but large hail is rarer. Now, hail can range in size from a quarter of an inch to over four inches in diameter. But because we don't often think about our world in exact measurements, common items are used to reference hail sizes. Pea and penny sized hail is very common in thunderstorms. And although that may be noisy, little to no damage is expected from smaller hail. However, once hailstones get to the size of quarters or greater, significant damage can occur. Hail the size of tennis balls to softballs can cause catastrophic damage and injury. Because of this, any hailstones that are greater than the size of an inch in diameter or the size of quarters, that's considered severe. And severe thunderstorm warnings are issued for storms with the potential to create quarter-sized hail or greater. Now, so what should you do if you find yourself under a severe thunderstorm warning for hail? If you're in your home, the first thing you should do is stay inside until the hail stops. Don't go outside to cover your car. It's too late for that if it's already hailing. In fact, some people get injured when they try to cover up their car if it's already hailing. It's important to also stay away from all windows, including skylights, as large hail can break that glass. Finally, and this is important, if you sustain damage to your car or your home or your property, be sure to document the time the hail occurred and the size of the hail. This is necessary for insurance purposes and you'll be grateful for that information later. It may also be important for you to know what to do if you are inside a vehicle during a hailstorm. If you're driving, try to find a safe place to pull over, like under a gas station awning. However, you should never, ever, ever park under a highway overpass. We see this all the time. This could lead to car accidents and end up creating more of a mess. The next thing you want to do is if you're in your car, you'll want to turn your back to the windows and don't leave the car until the hail stops. Notice when the severe thunderstorm warning ends, and at that time, it should be safe to get outside. We know that getting caught in a hailstorm can be a dangerous and certainly a somewhat scary thing, but we have an amazing tool to help you through a severe thunderstorm. That's right. Our KSAT Weather Authority app is free for Apple and Android users, and you can download it today. If a severe storm happens that even contains some hail, we'll go live from the app to keep you informed, and this is especially helpful even if you lose power. Right. Just make sure you allow notifications in the settings of your phone and we'll send alerts right to your device. On the app, you can also drop pictures of what you're seeing at home through the KSAT Connect feature. Not only will your picture possibly be used on KSAT, but as meteorologists, this helps us confirm the size and the location of the hail that is falling. 
That makes you an important part of our KSAT Weather Authority team during hail season. Thanks for watching this episode of KSAT Explains. Our hope is that the next time a hailstorm passes through San Antonio, you'll know more about what's happening and why. We'll see you next time.